Welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. I'm doing Card of the Day. I'm using the Dreams of Gaia Tarot. Again, I feel like I've used it a lot lately. But I was putting my cards away from doing my weekend pick a pile reading. And two of the decks that I used are I store in the same box as these and I went to put the lid on the box, and it was like, nope, not done yet. So, in essence, these are the ones that I'm supposed to be using today. So I did clear and shuffle them. Did I show that? Games of Gaia. There we go. So I'm going to get a card, and then let's see what we've got here. kind of look like I have bed head, but it's actually more like it's hot, so I put my wet hair up in a twist tie for the whole time. Well, not a twist tie, but you know what I mean. Okay. I somehow not surprised. Duality. So this is the Two of Wands. This is usually a choice card. It's like a low vibrational lover's card. This is the comparison of two opposites. So we're not at the union of the opposites. And it's inverted. I'm looking at this uh, negative space here. This would be sort of the union. Very amphora shaped. Holds the liquid, the emotion. So we have red, orange, and orange, yellow here. So we're dealing with the three lower chakras. This is, I mean, essentially I'm getting the same information over and over again. Mars and Aries, like we just, like has just happened. This is inverted though. And my instinct is the, the Martian symbol is similar to the Sagittarian symbol, but it's sort of tied. I guess I'm doing a lot of diagrams today. Where's my friggin? I'll use this one. The Sagittarius is an arrow. It's going in a it has a vector. It's going somewhere. The fire energy has a destination. The Martian symbol has a directive as well, but it's tied. It's roped to where it starts. So that's where we get growth. Right? That's why Aries, the Martian symbol, is in the springtime. Right? Plants plants will go somewhere, but they're fixed. They're tied to the earth, but they have movement. They go in a certain direction. They follow the sun or and so forth. Um, they, they seek the light. So when a human seeks the light, we have, at least in the 3D world, this freedom of movement. So we have a direction, like with the Sagittarius, Sagittarius energy. And... And then I see two, which is duality, and as a lower vibrational version of the lovers that tells me Gemini energy. So I'm back into this phase where the south and north nodes being in Sagittarius and Gemini right now are having a huge effect on the energies at play. Aside from Mars moving into Aries, Venus going direct, Saturn being retrograde and moving into Capricorn again, which is getting a lot of Saturnian, like do it, do it now energy, and then 
you know, the other planets or whatever that are retrograde. There were, there were six of them. I think Uranus is one of them. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. And then we had that full moon in Capricorn as well. So there's a lot... There's a lot going on, but the point is those nodal points are having a huge effect on things. And the union of opposites is coming in quick. Like two, we have two weeks until the dog days of summer start. And I'm saying summer in the northern hemisphere. We're dealing with the heliacal rising of the Sirius star system. Oh, I got, wait, I'm shuffling the card, so apparently I'm going to get another card. I didn't, I was not aware of that. So, oh, okay. This guy wants to come out and play. Huh. The Queen of Air. Also not surprising. So we have a duality here as well. We have the owl, the spirit, the higher guides, and then the queen here getting the messages, her crown chakra is open, her third eye is popping. It looks like there's a specific constellation in her eyeballs, but it kind of comes out looking, I know this isn't focusing on here, but I'll, I guess I could sketch it. It kind of looks like that in her eyeballs in both of them. So it's either some kind of specific constellation, it's a bicycle, or a um, balloon animal doggy, or deer, or whatever. Balloon animals. Maybe it's a deer because she's got deer antlers. But anyway, the Queen of Swords. A lower vibrational version of the High Priestess. So again, the themes are coming through. So we have air, definitely. We have fire and fire, definitely. Queen of Swords. Scorpio and Libra. Right? So the Justice card is also another lower vibrational version of the High Priestess. Well, actually, maybe it's not. It's like the mirror sister of the High Priestess. But the Queen of Swords is... Like, she can choose which direction to go to, right? She can choose to be either the High Priestess or Lady Justice. But here with it inverted, it's like the choice is being made for you. In order to balance the scales, you're being called to enter into this position, right? So look, we have 13 or 1, and we have 2 with Roman numerals. So it's like 1, 11, but it's also 2 duality plus another 1. If she's 1, that's union. But then we have 13. That scorpionic energy, especially with... Is that right? Yeah, the scorpionic... Wait, is that was I wrong? Is that Virgo? My bad, that's Virgo and Libra. Well, anyway, 13 is the death card, and that's Scorpio. So we have Virgo and Libra. So the Virgo energy gives that grounding. But Virgo is ruled by Mercury, which is currently in retrograde, but also, at least for a little while longer, I think, um, that air energy, which is also, why can't I think today? Mercury is also ruling Gemini, so it's back to that, that nodal energy that keeps switching back and forth. Um, so anyway, the point that I'm trying to make is that the Queen of Swords is someone who's in their truth. They've gained perspective. They can see fairly clearly around them. They're about ready to level up and make the choice to say, okay, am I going to get my masters in high priestess or am I going to get my masters in justice? 
but the 13 breaks down to 4. 4 is the emperor number, which means that she's still maintaining balance with the masculine side and having a foundation that she can move from because she's completed a transition. But here it's also like the choice is being made for you because you don't have or it's already, the decision is already made. You're not still contemplating it, right? It's either made for you if you wait too long or you have a choice. Right? It's like you have to fill out the paperwork. It's due today. You got to write something down. And if you have to, you can change your major later. But at this point in time, you either have to get on the bus or off the bus. Right? You have to get to somewhere else before you can change buses. There's a 15 total here. 13 and 2. That's that Capricorn devil energy again. There's this need for grounding and you have to put work in to transform and level up. There's also this idea of 3 which goes back to the Empress energy. But then if the 13 is 4 and 2, that's 6, that's healing, that's the I'm distracted, I've got like a little hangnail here, um, healing choice, the lovers, right? This queen acting on her choice is creating this higher level of choice available, right? When she's on the bus, then she can go and have to a place where there's more choices available than just two. Um, but then it's also balanced between the light and the dark, the masculine and the feminine. So hopefully that makes sense as to why these numbers are moving back and forth. So let's see what's on the bottom of the deck. Okay. So we have number eight. This is the sage. This is inverted. No, that's seven. I read it wrong. Number seven, the sage. So this deck runs a little differently. Oh, he's got an owl too. It's like the queen. He's got an owl. But he's also got a wolf. This is kind of like the hermit in this deck. But it's a little bit of the emperor as well. Oh, no, no, wait, no. The Hermit and the Magician, my bad, okay. But, but because, it, well, no, seven. Okay. Seven is usually the chariot. It's the number after the six. It's three empress and four emperor together. But in that way, when you're balanced, you do have sage. You have wisdom. Right? You've been around long enough to understand and know some shit. Seven and four, eleven, seven and thirteen, judgment that's closing the book on the chapter and being ready to move forward. Seven and two, that's nine, or seven minus two because it's inverted is five, which is pivot, but it can also be the hierophant, which is also kind of a union between yourself in the higher realms or you and someone else. So the way that these numbers are working, it's it's shifting its decision, its movement. I have to make us make a decision to go that way but I am informed in my decision but I have to make it quickly I don't have the time to sit here and, and dick around in him and haw now here we we see that this is also kind of a union of opposites we have a terrestrial animal we have a flight animal and then we have this man in the middle who is sort of bridging the gap, right? His head is in the clouds where the owl lives, but his feet are on the ground where the wolf lives. And he has this light shining because he's gone inside and brought forth this universal wisdom in the same way that there's this winged and golden sword that lights up the high priestess. She's sort of like a beacon, like a lighthouse. 
and he's kind of like a, a signal receiver out in the distance. All right, so the to summarize the message for today, I would say if you want to go even more in depth, watch the entire pick a pile video because there's slightly different explanations in each three pile for the same theme. Um, the gist of it is union of opposites, masculine, feminine, light, dark, past, future, um, also the the ego and the inner child because the union would be your your real self so uh, you know hot cold up down backwards forwards um, crystalline and crazy so and coming in with that balance it's like triangulating a point. It's it's like, okay, I'm going to look from here, I'm going to look from here. And what I see, this is how people see, right? We have an eyeball here, an eyeball here. And when we look from different directions, our brain sees a three-dimensional image. That three-dimensional image is the synthesis of one polarity and the other. So it's being able to unify ourselves gives us clearer vision to see where we need to go the wisdom and the vision to make the choices that we have to make right now. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the, the sort of cosmic energies. It's like um, you spiritually have to run this gauntlet. You have to do it now because there things going to come down and like chomp you in the head and the arrows are going to shoot and the trap door is going to come and the poison darts if you don't get in time and move and make the choice now to either step or go back. A little bit of Indiana Jones temple kind of shit there. So, um, so that's what it is. Decisions, decisions. Uh, if you want to get a reading, you can check out the entire list of readings in the description box of my infomercial video, or you can email me, the cat came back at camp at gmail.com. I have a discount reading, it's nine bucks, and then I have some other readings that are more expensive. Um, if you want to donate and so on, you can hit that tip jar paypal.me slash cat the minion. I also have Cash App and Venmo. Those are Cat the Minion as well. I'd encourage you to like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlists tab and my discussion tab, and check out some of the other stuff I have available, art in my catalog, prints, merch, coloring books, and so on. So stay groovy, and we will see you later. Bye.